Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Miley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 27th, 2020. We're recording on 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for one or potentially two tropical storms to be forming in the Atlantic Basin over the next five days and the potential for a hurricane impact to the Baja California uh, Peninsula there. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic now we can see that we have a couple of very important things kind of going on today. Uh, first of all, we have Invest Area 96L, which has been newly designated as of this morning. And development chances have really begun to uh, begun to increase on the system as it starts to move off towards the west northwest here. And eventually this will be impacting parts of the Carolinas and Georgia by tomorrow afternoon, uh, maybe even as early as tomorrow morning. Uh, so for you folks there in coastal Carolina, uh, especially South Carolina and uh, Georgia, you know, impacts will be felt as early as tomorrow. Make sure that you have your hurricane preparedness plans ready to go. Uh, probably won't be a hurricane or anything by that, uh, but a tropical depression or storm could certainly be on the horizon. We'll take a look at that here in, more in a minute. We also have Hurricane Enrique over here in the eastern Pacific Basin impacting parts of Mexico right now. And this will be also impacting the Baja of California over the next couple of days, bringing with it some heavy rainfall, gusty winds, and the potential for just very misery uh, and unpleasant weather out there. And then we also have Invest Area 95L over here in the Atlantic Basin and a new tropical wave, which could also get highlighted by the National Hurricane Center uh, over the next couple of days. So we have a very busy end to the month of June here uh, in the Western Hemisphere. So taking a look here at Hurricane Enrique, this is the visible satellite imagery here. We can see that we've had a, a kind of a non-descendant eye trying to form down here. You can kind of see that little depression of uh, clouds there. This indicates where an eye may indeed be trying to kind of pop out and clear. Uh, this is also indicative that, again, the storm really uh, has uh, kind of been on and off with its intensification phase. On the one hand, it is closer to land at this point, which does inhibit some of the uh, greater intensification, but on the other end, it is closer to some of this uh, warmer uh, sea surface temperatures across here. And this is bringing with it a lot of heavy rainfall and tropical storm conditions to parts of the Mexican coastline here. And this will be getting awfully close here where hurricane watches are in effect. If we go here to the track map again, we have a hurricane watch in effect for most of, the, most of uh, parts of the coastal Mexican regions. And we also have a tropical storm warning as tropical storm conditions are spreading inland at this point. Hurricane conditions still remain offshore, uh, which is a good thing, but we can kind of see that uh, the core of this system is kind of just meandering uh, and getting awfully close to land. So if we get any of these kind of wobbles where we kind of get it close and then maybe turn out like that, uh, we could be dealing with some hurricane conditions that could come ashore. So for that reason, there is a hurricane watch in effect. Uh, but otherwise than that, this is expected to be approaching the Baja of California really by Wednesday afternoon, by Tuesday into Wednesday and uh, by that time, again, we could bring uh, some low and tropical storm conditions to the Baja of California. I wouldn't be surprised to see a tropical storm watch get hoisted for these areas uh, within the next 24 hours or so. Uh, but again, this will be weakening and then eventually uh, be uh, post-tropical by Thursday. So again, impacts right now mainly uh, confined to parts of coastal Mexico and the, ba and the Baja of California, of course, uh, by mid to late week. Uh, we'll be getting those impacts there from Hurricane Enrique, which is over in the eastern Pacific. Focusing in on the Atlantic Basin, we have Invest Area 96L with a 50% chance of development over the next five days. This has been an area of disturbed weather, which we first started talking about yesterday, that uh, originally kind of formed uh, between two upper level lows near Bermuda. And this system has now uh, briskly moved off towards the west and northwest here and begun to uh, undergo uh, tropical cyclone genesis. And I, I do believe that uh, genesis chances will probably uh, be increasing uh, throughout the remainder of the afternoon and into the day tomorrow. And you can see here that really the development chances are really from about uh, coastal Georgia through South Carolina. Uh, but impacts, again, could it be ex extended uh, well away from the center there? If we take a look here at the visible satellite, what we'll notice is that we've had a deep convective burst uh, over top of uh, what originally was an upper level low. And this has now kind of worked its way down to the surface and now become a surface low in this area. 
Uh, we can kind of tell that this is almost about ready to be closed off here as we have earth relative westerly winds here on the southern side and brisk easterly winds here on the northern side. And uh, because of that, uh, this is likely now beginning to undergo the process of tropical cyclogenesis. Uh, there is very little shear in this environment, but there is a lot of dry stable air out here uh, to the east of this or to the west of the system rather. And if we look here uh, on the water vapor imagery, kind of zoom this out and jump this to the water vapor loop, uh, what we'll kind of notice is that we have a system uh, that is still firmly entrenched within this upper level low uh, that is kind of retreating and backing out towards the west here. So this upper level disturbance is now backing out towards the west and this is our system right here, 96L. And we also have another upper level low that is positioned directly to the southeast of the system. Now we've enveloped this area of relatively lighter shear, which has virtually allowed for this dry air to remain confined on the western side of this circulation and not really be entrained into it. However, any increase in shear would easily push these uh, drier air conditions into our system and disrupt it. And shear will be on the increase as this approaches the Carolina and Georgia coastline over the next 12 to 24 hours. But the upper level low is sufficiently backing away at this point and may kind of create a little bit of a favorable environment where conditions may just come together like we're seeing right now. And we may be on, on the verge of having a tropical depression or storm uh, to enter the region over the next couple of days. And again, this is mainly going to be a heavy rainfall, gusty wind threat, uh, not really seeing the potential for a, a major storm. But again, you know, 35, 40, maybe 45 miles per hour, you know, at the worst right now, at least at the moment, you know, that could still, you know, cause some problems and certainly is a disruptor to your day. Uh, so the bottom line here is if you live anywhere from about coastal Georgia through South Carolina, it is just important to understand that you will have a system coming your way. Uh, this will not impact Florida in any way, and North Carolina seems to be spared uh, from this. So this is mainly a coastal Georgia and, and South Carolina problem at the moment. Looking at the upper ocean heat content in this environment, again, our system is sitting right now roughly in this area, and upper ocean heat content values are not all that impressive. However, upper ocean heat content will begin to increase as the system approaches the Gulf Stream, and that's where I think the bulk of the intensification will really uh, kind of occur within that area. So I, I do believe that we will probably be seeing this strengthen into a tropical depression or maybe even storm uh, over the next couple of days. And because of that, again, we could see advisories that may be issued in the next couple of hours, even maybe as potentially as early as, you know, 11 o'clock or so. And again, we'll just have to really kind of monitor the progress of that. And if we look here at the actual sea surface temperatures across this area, again, our system is sitting uh, roughly in this area here moving off like that and or kind of something like that rather uh, but again these water temperatures will uh, greatly increase in the Gulf Stream uh, with 28 to 29 degrees Celsius water is a little bit cooler here in the shelf waters uh, but still more than sufficient and, and supportive for tropical cyclone genesis and maintenance uh, so this will likely be something on approach into uh, the Carolina and Georgia coastlines but nothing uh, nothing significant at this moment if we look here at the GFS 850 millibar vorticity here, this is the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. And again, just what we're kind of looking at here, this is invest area 96L. And again, this system has been trending upwards in the latest model runs here. We can kind of see uh, that if we jump back to the run uh, 6Z yesterday, we barely even had a sharp wave axis in here. You could kind of see some of this little kink in the flow here. This is our, our sharp trough that was in through here. And now we've trended on the recent model runs to a much more compact little cyclone in this area, still embedded within a very uh, sharp trough, but now we have a closed isobar in there. So this is really indicative of uh, the potential for tropical cyclone genesis, a stronger storm that's being modeled here. And if we look here at the vortex average sounding for this environment, again, just trying to get it as small as I can, we notice that shear is relatively light right now, only about 10 knots of shear. And most of that here is going to be confined to the western side of the circulation. There's a little bit of dry air, especially on the western side, uh, but that has not been entrained because we have such a low uh, relative uh, shear value compared to where the storm is actually moving. 
that the shear vectors are just not, they're not pushing, they're not forcing that dry air into the circulation. And again, we can kind of go back to the water vapor satellite imagery and see all this dry air that's kind of out here. It's just not getting wrapped in. Now, uh, with time, I do think that will probably start to be wrapped in as the circulation intensifies. You get more of those westerly winds on the south side, and that will likely help to transport some of that dry air uh, into the circulation, which is likely going to prohibit significant formation. And this is also moving at a very brisk pace at about uh, 15 to 20 miles per hour uh, towards the coast here. And this is also what's likely to end up kind of stopping this from becoming really intense because those really fast motions, it's hard to close off a circulation uh, with a system going that fast. But we'll notice here on the GFS that this, uh, uh, on the 12Z run, it doesn't really do much with it. Now we can kind of look towards uh, maybe the potential for a little bit of uh, increase in shear. If we look here at the uh, sounding here, we have about 11 knots of shear that is on the increase here. And we do have a little bit of dry stable air to the north. Uh, now, the GFS is likely kind of overdoing this here. Because we have such a very small, compact little system, you can't really have um, the, the models just don't resolve that in the grid spacing that's uh, on these global models. And because of that, with the very small scale uh, size of, of this, it's really hard to kind of get a good sample on the actual conditions within, you know, the tropical cyclone. Again, our system is not really that wide right now. And because of that, uh, this is taking advantage of that warmer atmosphere and just warmer sea surface temperatures and better environment across the area. So there's some chance that we may get some dry air intrusions, and that would be the one thing that would likely uh, tamper with a significant organization. But on the GFS, it doesn't really do much. And if we look here at the 200 millibar winds, again, we have most of the cyclonic flow uh, that is to the south of the system. Of course, our system right now would be embedded in a brisk easterly uh, kind of uh, east to west type of flow. And this is likely to kind of only aggregate uh, the potential for our system to have a harder time closing off uh, within the next couple of hours. Again, this is right now as of 8 a.m. and we'll move to 2, uh, 2 p.m. this afternoon, so just about six minutes ago. And again, our system right now is sitting roughly in about this region, still with some of those brisk uh, east to west winds here, but in this more cyclonic flow environment. But over time, that cyclonic flow will drift southward. We get a very uh, big fetch here of east to west winds uh, because of a big uh, upper level high that is sitting off the northeast coast, pumping in uh, this flow, this, uh, you know, onshore flow, basically. And this uh, could also set up uh, maybe for the potential for some surf uh, conditions as well. Uh, but the biggest limiting factor, this will be moving at a pretty fast pace and really kind of going away from, uh, you know, going away from the better environment at that time. Now, focusing out across the deep tropics, we have Invest Area 95L, with still a 30% chance of development over the next five days, this has been a system that has come off the coast of Africa and originally had great model support for developing uh, well south here and maybe even becoming a long track main development region system. So far, this has really failed to develop. However, recent model runs have indicated that development closer to the Lesser Antilles does seem probable at this point. And we will also be watching for a new wave coming off the coast of Africa at even a lower latitude than this system, which may even uh, only help to favor additional development from this wave back behind here, uh, which we'll take a look at over the next couple of days. But now uh, we can see that the Lesser Antilles, including Barbados, uh, even Puerto Rico, and parts of the Dominican Republic and Hispaniola have been included uh, in this development uh, chance area. Again, right now, development chances of only 30%. Uh, but if we go and take a look here at the visible satellite imagery, uh, we had a very well-defined system earlier this morning that looked like it was attempting to close off a circulation. However, the convection has really kind of ceased since then, and this has likely become a very sharp trough that is located in here. And we can kind of tell that we don't really have uh, a lot of westerly winds here uh, at the surface, and certainly we have a lot of easterly winds, but this trade, these trade winds are only going to increase as the coming days uh, you know, go by. And the system has now begun to encounter less favorable environment out here in the central main development region as it gains latitude and starts to get out of the uh, more warm, moist air that is kind of situated down to the south across here. Uh, but because of that, we have also seen this break away from the monsoon trough. And this will have maybe a, a hint of an easier time trying to develop once it gets closer to the Western Antilles. 
If we look here at the upper ocean heat content values, again, our system is really sitting right now uh, within this environment right now where it's just sitting north of about 10 degrees, which is here. And our system really can't uh, intensify that much uh, because, again, right now convection is really limited. We have uh, a large Saharan air plume uh, that we can also go back here and see just this very unfavorable bout of uh, environment that is ahead of our system. And that's kind of really preventing the majority of the development right now. But once this really gets past about uh, 45 degrees west, which is located right about here, uh, we'll start to notice that the upper ocean heat content environment starts to really gain uh, a lot of favorability. And this is where the better chance for development will occur as the system tries to then eventually gain latitude and slip off towards kind of the north and west here around the big subtropical ridge that's going to be building in. And again, right when it nears the Lesser Antilles, I do believe that's when development chances will become at its highest. If we look here at the 850 millibar vorticity, uh, we can see that there is an area of decent cyclonic vorticity here, but it is located still kind of within that monsoon trough. But we notice that the northern lobe of that has begun to kind of separate from this monsoon trough that is kind of down here. And this northern part of the lobe is what we're going to be watching to, to come kind of off towards the north and west over the next few days. And again, development chances near the Lesser Antilles seem to be most favored. If we look here at the GFS 850 vorticity map, we can kind of see here is 95L right now. And this is our next wave that we'll be watching coming off the coast of Africa here. And again, development chances are pretty meager. We can see that the GFS, again, does amplify this wave ever so slightly as it nears the Lesser Antilles. Uh, other model runs, uh, such as the run from 18Z and 12Z yesterday, did have a tropical cyclone in that area. Now, one of the things that we'll be looking for, if we kind of take a look here at a sounding of this environment, uh, what we'll kind of notice is that we have a very strong trade wind flow, and the flow aloft is actually more backed out of the south-southeast uh, than it would be just directly kind of easternly flow here. We have south-southeast winds uh, kind of backing almost southward uh, at about uh, 200 uh, you know, at, at about kind of 150 millibars or so in the atmosphere. This is really high. Uh, this is about the top of the tropopause pause here. Uh, but regardless, we have some very strong brisk trade winds across here, and that is going to be creating a lot of shear, and that is also going to be helping to uh, have a, uh, to really disregard and, and really kind of throw out the potential for uh, a circulation to develop because if you have a storm that is kind of moving really fast, it is hard to close off westernlies. Uh, it is hard to close off that, you know, getting westerlies on the southern side because you've got brisk trade winds coming in from the east. It's moving briskly towards the west, which means that it's harder to get those westerly winds on the south side of the system to kind of close the circulation off, which it would need for tropical cyclone uh, genesis. And um, that is certainly going to be one of the main problems here. Uh, but we can tell that this is at least a little bit of high relative humidity pocket coming through here. And the capping inversion is not too strong. So we could see maybe a little bit of a flare up here. The 12Z Euro, again, kind of much of the same situation here. It does try to amplify this wave a little bit as it nears the Lesser Antilles. And then here's our new system kind of coming back across here. So it's going to be very interesting to watch. Again, I don't think this will be a big threat for the Lesser Antilles, but I do think it is something to kind of monitor. Again, either way, gusty winds and heavy rainfall, the potential for flooding and mudslides, uh, of course, will accompany with any tropical wave that will be moving through that area. At the very least, this could be certainly a very amplified wave uh, that will kind of be coming through. So we'll just have to kind of keep an eye on that. The European ensembles from the 6Z run, again, certainly a little bit more amplified with this wave near the Lesser Antilles. And then it does uh, significantly amplify this wave uh, to the south of here. And we may even have to watch for development out of that. Uh, so we'll be watching here again, the, the, G, the Euro ensembles here definitely uh, trying to amplify this wave. The uh, deterministic run there of the Euro definitely trying to amplify it as well. But we'll be kind of watching to see how everything progresses over the next couple of days. All right. That being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.